So we bless God and we give God glory and honor. Let us continue with our reading. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you might be picked on and overlooked at work because you're a follower of Christ. You might have been sacked because you're a nurse, you were wearing a chain, it had the cross on it, or you were wearing a ring and it had the curse on it, or you had the Bible on your desk and you lost your job and now you're thinking, what am I going to do? You're, you're thinking the wrong thing. What is God going to do? And I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. He will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will bring you out. Praise God. The prophets were persecuted. You will be persecuted also. Praise God. But we shall overcome. In fact, we have already overcome because God has given us the victory and he causes us to triumph. And the greater one lives on the inside of us because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. No good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly. So continue to walk uprightly. Continue to serve the Lord with gladness. Continue to come before his presence with singing and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. I'm running out of time. So um, verse 10. Blessed are the persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So at least you're going to heaven, isn't it? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So they, they, they might lie about you, revile you, you know. It, it, it's, they're just being messages of Satan. They're just being used by Satan who's trying to steal your vision. He's trying to steal God's glory. But hang on, because God will come true for you. Praise the name of Jesus. Joseph had two dreams. His brothers, they hated him. And when he had the second dream, they hated him all the more for it. So Satan will use the people who are closest to you, the people who you love, who you think will come true for you. Then he would probably even use your pastors, your teachers, you know, to um, reject you, throw you out of the church, throw you out of the synagogue because you are called to do the works of God. But remember, God uses the foolish things of the world to confine to confound the wise. So we give God honor and we give God glory and God looks on the heart, even though man looks on the outward appearance. Um, David, you know, God chose David. He was his chosen servant. But yet when the, um, Samuel the prophet came to anoint one of Jesse's children to become king, Jesse didn't even think that um, David was worthy. He just left him looking after the sheep, you know. Elab, his brother, he belittled him and said, you know, these few sheep that he was watching, praise the name of Jesus. But that was God's one. Praise God. And in God's perfect timing, David was exalted. He was anointed and he was made the king. Praise God. And even Saul, he became jealous because the people said, um, the, the women, they sang songs and they frolicked and they said, Saul killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. And since then, um, a spirit of jealousy came upon um, Saul. And he hated, you know, he hated David, God's anointed one. And when the evil spirit would come upon him because the spirit of God departed from him and an evil spirit came upon him. And it wasn't the spirit from God. I know I read in the um, Testament, it says that it's a spirit from God because every good and perfect gift comes from God. God doesn't have any evil spirits. It's God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So that must have been some mistranslation because the evil spirit didn't come from God. It comes from the devil. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt anyone with evil. So that evil spirit came upon Saul because of his jealousy, his wicked acts, his wicked um, behavior. But then it was David who had to play the um, instrument, praise the name of Jesus, and the spirit will come off from Saul. Praise God and the torment would stop. So we give God honor and we give God glory. Hallelujah. I'll be closing shortly because um, I have to do something. But um, let's continue for these um, few minutes that I have. So verse 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile, revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. You know, when the people lied on Jesus when he was on the cross and so on, praise God and the servant is not greater than his Lord. They mocked Jesus. So why shouldn't you be mocked? Why shouldn't you be ridiculed for your fight? Just keep on standing. Just hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering because God is faithful 
who has promised. He called you, continue to do what he has called you. It's not what man says, it's what God says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So there's nothing new under the sun. The prophets were persecuted, they were mocked, they were humiliated, some were killed, you know, they were put in the fire and all kinds of things for standing on the word of God, for doing the will of God. Hallelujah. It will be the same with you. They hated Jesus without a cause. He came to his own and his own received him not. So we just bless God and we give him praise and we give him honor. So we're going to have a quick look at um, what happened to the um, Paul who wrote about half of the New um, Testament. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, praise the name of Jesus, chapter 11. We give God honor and we give God glory. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. You are so worthy. You are so wonderful. I'm so sorry that I'm limited for time, so I can't get into everything that I would like to get into. Praise the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Comments in verse 7. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the devil knew the plans and purposes that God had for, for um, Paul's life and, and he wanted to stop it. And to keep me from being puffed up and much elated by exceeding greatness, preeminence of these revela revelations. I'm reading from the Amplified Version now. There was given me a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to rack, sorry, yeah, to rack and buffet and harass me and to keep me from being excessively exalted. Praise the name of Jesus. So Paul was receiving all this revelation, knowledge from God. He was leading so many people to the Lord. He was writing uh, about half of the New Testament and he was doing all these things. And the devil, who is the joy killer, who only comes to steal, kill and destroy, he wanted to stop him. He didn't, didn't want to see people being born again. He didn't want Paul to fulfill the call of God on his life. Praise God. He didn't want Paul to train up Timothy and to train up all the other ministers and even people like me and you who are still learning from the teachings of Paul. He didn't want that to happen. So he tried to stop it. So God may have called you to do something. Praise God. And the devil who wants to steal, kill and destroy. That's the only thing he comes for. And he's trying to kill your marriage. He's trying to kill your joy. He's trying to kill your ministry. He's trying to finish your finances. But keep on trusting God and God will bring you out. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. And God always gives us the victory and causes us to triumph. It may look like if the devil is winning, but his time is running out. Praise the name of Jesus. Three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this and begged him that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities that my strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. So praise God. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. If we didn't have weaknesses, none of us would have been born again and been saved. Many of us, we came to Jesus when we were rock bottom. We tried alcohol. We tried men. We tried women. We tried work. We tried cigarettes. We tried drugs. Everything that we thought could satisfy us, the deceitfulness of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, everything, and it didn't satisfy us. And that's the time when we came to God. So God will use your trial, your persecution, your tribulations to turn it around for the good. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, who are called according to to his purpose. So as I begin to close. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, able, powerful in divine strength. I'm just gonna um, 
read quickly because I need to close. So please go to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Are they ministering servants of Christ the Messiah? I am talking like one beside himself, but I am more and far more extensive and abundance labor, labors, sorry, with far more imprisonments, beaten with countless stripes and frequently at the point of death. This was Paul, the great apostle speaking. Five times I received from the hands of the Jews 40 lashes, all but one. Praise the name of Jesus. He was going through all these hardships, these trials, these tribulations, because the devil was trying to stop him from fulfilling the call of God and the purpose for his life. So you may be experiencing financial hardship, lack, um, problems in your marriage, problems at work, praise God, because the devil is trying to stop you. But we are unstoppable because we are more than conquerors and begin a surpassing victory through Christ. Praise the name. So we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us, and we will do it. Praise the name of Jesus. Five times I received from the hands of the Jews 40 lashes, all but one. Three times I have been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I have been aboard a ship, wrecked at sea, a whole night, a day, I have spent adrift on the deep. Many times on journeys exposed to peril from the rivers, from rivers, perils from bandits. So these thieves were coming, he was encountering so many problems and afflictions. It was like, God, where are you? But I'm here to tell you, God is here. He is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Praise the name of Jesus. He gives us all things so that we can richly enjoy. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we're already blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed in our coming in and we're blessed in our going out. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. I have been aboard a ship, wrecked at sea, a whole night, a day. I have spent adrift on the deep, many times on journeys, exposed to peril from rivers, peril from bandits, peril from my own nations, peril from Gentiles, peril in the city, peril in the desert places. So he was experiencing trouble everywhere he went, perils in the sea, perils from those posing as believers but destitute of Christian knowledge and piety. Hallelujah. So this, well, this is when it hurt him the most. People professing to be Christians and they were digging a dagger in his back. Praise God. That's what happens, you know, when it, when it seems like you tell your pastors, God has called me to do the will of God. And then they throw you out of the church. Oh, you can't be called. You're not good enough. Praise God. But a man in John 9, he, he um, who was born blind at his birth so that God could be glorified. Praise the name. He too was thrown out of the synagogue. But Jesus went and he looked for him. Praise God. And then he was born again. Hallelujah. Not only did he receive his sight. So we give God honor. So God will turn all things around around for your good just continue to serve him praise god in toil and hardships watching often through sleepless nights in hunger and thirst frequently driven to fasting by want in cold and explode and exposure and lack of clothing so he had to go to fast not that he wanted to do prayer and fasting he was forced into fast he was destitute he was naked he experienced all these perils but he still continued to serve god and so can we so continue to trust god and god will deliver you he will bring you out thank you so much for watching have a great day be blessed until we meet again goodbye and thanks for watching